Welcome to the channel. The Maze Legendary Banner is finally here and I'm really interested to see who we get. It should be either blue or red, I believe. And I think, if I had to take a guess, I think it's gonna be like male cord, if I had to guess. I don't know, I feel like we've gotten some fate stuff announced recently like with the corn statue and stuff. So maybe it's male corn. Other than that, it could be like the, you know, the usual suspects like Soren or Soth or something like that. Also, it could be like, maybe we finally get an engaged character, right? That could, that could be possible. I don't know. Let's jump in and see. Okay, I was, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that, wow, she looks really good. Okay, so I heard the Fates music and I was like, oh man, I called this perfect. I'm a genius. And then it's Tenoka. <laughs> she is red though. So we have a red bow flyer um, giving the resistance buff. Interesting. Drawn by Kita Senri too. Oh my God, it's Wings of Mercy 4. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, wow, this uh, this is one crazy unit already just because Wings of Mercy 4 is there and it's a new C skill as well. Okay, so we have Kanto 1, Slaying. We have Effective Against Flying and Armor Foes, which is really nice. We got your typical attack and speed plus 6. We have 20% true damage and it works with AoEs, which is very notable. She also gets Offensive Null Follow. And then if she has Weapon Triangle Advantage, so if she's fighting against a green unit or if her speed is greater than the foe speed, the foe cannot counterattack. This is a very solid weapon. It has pretty much everything you want on like an offensive like bow uh, character, correct, right? Like you get the effective damage, you get a uh, very safe engage, right? You get essentially a full fire speed effect, allowing you're faster, which she should be able to do in most situations, right? She's gonna be a newer unit and she has a lot of attack and speed already in her kit. She gets true damage, which is gonna allow her to hit really hard and then offensive no fault, which is really important for those flyers and calves because they don't have as easy access to uh, no fault like the infantry units do. So I'm already pretty impressed with this weapon. It's looking pretty good. Let's go down and check out Wings of Mercy 4 because I am very, very scared. This might be like break the game good. Let's see. Okay, so we have Wings of Mercy 4 and this is kind of crazy. It's not like completely and utterly broken, but it's definitely a big upgrade. So we're getting some stats. We're getting defensive res minus three. So you're gonna really hit a little bit harder no matter if you're a mage or if you're like a melee character. Not the biggest deal, honestly. The bigger deal is though, if you are within three spaces of an ally and the ally has not 100% HP essentially, you can teleport adjacent to the ally. But then also it's just a massive upgrade over normal Wings of Mercy where the HP condition is no longer 50%, now it's 60%, so it is easier to hit. And you can also teleport within two spaces of that ally. So you can actually like have more range, which is a very, very big deal. Uh, in Gale Force, this opens up a ton of things. You can really teleport into different areas. Uh, with range gale force this could even let you like shoot someone and then like you could teleport into the back line so that's pretty cool i like that a lot now let's move on to her preference c skill rallying cry so essentially we have an at start of turn if she's within two spaces of an ally she grants herself special acceleration and those allies as well which is really strong this is the effect we've seen on Naw. it's very very good um, it, it could be really good on gale force typically you're gonna want someone else who can gale force to have the, uh, that effect which neither Na or Hinoka will be able to do. But even so, that's really powerful and it can really help with a lot of like acceleration that you do need. And for Hinoka herself, it's gonna allow her to get into Deadeye range much easier, Easier, right? She's gonna be able to hit once, have Deadeye up, and then smash that in. Now, the one thing is, of course, that you know she doesn't have any type of uh, anti-guard or tempo, so she will be a bit weak to that. But even so, it's a big, big deal. It's gonna allow her to like really proc Deadeye a lot more and make her a nuking ability much stronger. But that's not even it. She also gives out charge to herself and all flying allies within two spaces, which is really insane. So she's essentially gonna be like a Leer, but instead of having to have like ally support where you're only gonna have one person getting charged, it's gonna be all flying allies. So Hinoka kind of wants to lead a flying army in a sense, and that can be really, really powerful in things like summoner duels or even like Gale Force flying strategies and ether raids. But in summoner duels, I can see some crazy stuff. Like you give Hinoka like with Altina and they have charge and like the dancer has charge and you're just flying across the map destroying things. That sounds pretty horrifying. And then lastly, she does have like a rain effect essentially where she's inflicting speed, defense, and resistance minus five on infantry, armored, and cavalry foes. So it's not exactly like a rain, right? It only affects um, non-flyers essentially, but it is a much bigger range as well where it's within three rows and three columns while a hold effect is only within three spaces. So that is pretty good. That, that's that's a nice powerful C skill. It's a nice combination of support and power for herself. This unit actually looks pretty insane. So when it comes to roles, obviously Hinoka is going to want to be a nuke and a support. Those are the two things she's gonna be doing. She's gonna be able to do a ton of damage and kill things, but she's also gonna be able to offer that support to your team, especially flyers. 
So she's really going to synergize well with flying mages, flying dancers, and then also your other flying nukes, or units like Altina, which is the first thing I'm thinking of, of course. But there's a lot of flying units in the game, obviously. When it comes to game modes, I can see this unit being used in a lot of places, right? She's going to be really strong in Arena. Arena is already very uh, flyer favored, so her being able to like just be insane at flying essentially is going to be really scary to deal with and really annoying to deal with is she's going to be able to give everybody like charge essentially so imagine like having let's say hanoka and then you have like duo dagger and like i don't know legendary azura probably not legendary azura but like i don't know duo peony or something like that right all of a sudden you have this whole flying team charging at you and then they can also like dance right that's and pathfinder like oh that sounds disgusting so that's something to look forward to in your arena <laughs> runs i guess um so that, she's obviously gonna be good there when it comes to ether raids i could definitely see her being used on offense on defense it's a bit more questionable in my opinion um obviously you know she could still be really strong and charge could be annoying i could see you catching people off guard but at the same time with charge the problem is that you could accidentally give yourself too much range and then people could just bait you in an easy place and then they could kind of come in and you just you know you lose right now obviously if she's fast enough on defense uh then she can make it so that they can't counter attack but typically, Aether Raid's offense does have the favor when it comes to speed, so that is something to consider as well. When it comes to Aether Raid's offense, I could definitely see her being a powerful nuke there. She could technically like pre-charge an AoE, and then she would get that true damage with it. She could kind of initiate, right, do the big AoE damage, and weaken the enemy team, and then the rest of your team could come in. So that's also an option, right? But the mode I think she's going to be the best in, obviously, is Summoner Duels. Like, this unit seems like she's pretty built for Summoner Duels. She has, like, all the things you really want, right? She has a good amount of support. She has a lot of power. She will do a lot of damage. She also has charge, which means she has a ton of mobility, which is a really big deal in Summoner Duels. And she can even make it so she has a sweep effect, which means she's really good against, like, Vantage units or some of those, like, safe tanks who actually want to kill things. So overall, I think this unit's extremely good, very powerful. Uh, it's very unfortunate that I just released my ranged nuke tier list and then we get a new ranged nuke literally a day later. I did think this might happen, but you know, but of course none of my tier lists last very long. We always have to add somebody new to this. Now, just for my preemptive look at this, right? I haven't seen her stats or anything like that. I think Hinoka's already easily into S tier, probably dub S tier in my opinion in that tier list because she pretty much has everything she wants. The only weakness I'm really seeing here is that she doesn't have anti-guard or tempo, but the special cooldown charge does help with that a bit. Okay, let's start off with Red. On Red, we do have Hanoka herself, obviously, but she's also sharing with Legendary Nana and Rearmed Ophelia. And this is a really strong share for Red. Now, you aren't necessarily getting the merge value, right? You're not getting like mythic merge value where you're directly getting score increase, but you're getting three units that are extremely strong. As I mentioned, Hanoka is probably going to be one of the strongest flying nukes we have in the game, though we'll have to see our stats to make sure of that. But we're for sure knowing that Legendary Nana, who is definitely one of the best melee nukes in the game and is very, very powerful. And then on the other hand, we have Rearmed Ophelia, who necessarily isn't the most powerful nuke, but she offers extremely valuable fodder in the form of Special Spiral 4 and the ability to duplicate fodder, right? If you see my stream of duplicating fodder with Ophelia, it can get really insane. You can really duplicate a lot of things like finish skills, like Time Souls 4 and Special Spiral 4 as well. And it gets to the point where you can really just get a lot of investment from Ophelia's so that's definitely a color you might want to pull on. Now, the second best color, in my opinion, is going to be blue. Blue does have Legendary Myrrh, Sheeta, and Alfred. Now, this completely caught me off guard. I expected Chloe to be here because I didn't think they would do double rearmed hero in one Legendary Banner. But they actually went for it. So the value in blue is actually quite good, right? You're getting a Water Legendary, you're getting a Wind Legendary, and you're getting Alfred as well. Legendary Murr is easily a very powerful unit. She's a great frontliner and she scores optimally in arena because she can run that distant counter seal. So she's a really good investment. Honestly, she's just better gatekeeper as well. She can really shut down all those warping effects, which have become extremely rampant in our meta, right? We're just getting Hanoka who's adding charge, which is even more warping on top of Guidance 4, right? So having Murr is a great investment there. Sheeta, in my opinion, is not the best legendary. She hasn't aged the best. She isn't bad by any means, but she definitely needs a lot of help to actually secure those kills with Vantage. So not my favorite legendary, to be honest. But then you have Alfred, who's a great source of fodder, right? You get Arcane Chung, which is a great Arcane Lance. It doesn't necessarily fit onto every Lance unit, but if you're looking for a unit to like Gale Force, or if you're looking for like a slower Lance unit, I think that's the better Arcane weapon you're going to be going for, right? And then he even has Flow and Trace, which is an amazing B skill, one of the best B skills for Cavs. Uh, it gives you that offensive no fall and Trace as well. So honestly, just a plethora of fodder there. Great pickup right there in blue. So I think blue actually is a pretty solid amount of fodder, especially if you do need some legendaries for an Arena Core. 
After that, I'm going to say green. Now, green's kind of a mixed bag. You have Legendary Robin, who is one of the most meta-powerful units right now because of the insane support he can give through that Omni Unity effect, you know, grand strategy, right? Very, very powerful unit. Definitely do not want to underestimate him. But then you have Sather and Dagger. Now, Sather is a very good unit. I don't want people to underestimate or like think I'm saying she's bad. She's very, very good, but you need to know how to use her. You need to know how to plan how to use her. She takes a lot of thought to get the full effect of her uh, C skill that can turn off enemies, right? You need to know how to like charge up her AoEs, take out things, position her correctly. She's not a unit you can just throw onto a team and just she works magically. So I think she is a great Astro Mythic, but if you're not a planner type, then I don't really think she's the best Astro Mythic for you. Then lastly, you have Dagger, who is a good Light Mythic. She's not bad, but she's not amazing either. And this is coming from a plus 10 Dagger user, right? I've used her a ton. She can be very good in like Gale Force strategies or just giving it Pathfinder on your offense. It's okay, but she's not like the Light Mythic you really want a plus 10. So it's kind of a miss there in my opinion. But overall, Green's decent, definitely not bad, especially if you can get those Robin hits, but you know, RNG could be cruel. And then lastly, we have Colorless, and I am very disappointed to be honest because I really, really did not want Ascendant Valencia to be in this Colorless pool. This Colorless pool is not great, to say the least. And I was really hoping Alencia would show up either next month with Femortis and Asker, or like two months from now with like some other units that I wanted to merge up. Makai is not bad, don't get me wrong. She's a great nuke, and if you give her the proper investment, she can kill a lot of stuff. But she is a bit old, that's just the best way to put it. And then you have Legendary Corrin, who is just, well, she's Legendary Corrin. She's not very good, that's just the truth of it, right? She really needs that remix. Hopefully she gets it by the end of the year and it can help her like, improve her because she scores great, but her combat is is not great in the slightest. Uh, so in Colorless, you pretty much have Alencia, who's a great hit to get, right? You can get like an, a great unit with awesome support and also Dazzling Shift Fodder if you're going for that. Though I would not, you know, ever recommend foddering Alencia because that's kind of a sin. So in my opinion, it goes red, then blue, then green, then colorless. Now let's answer the final question, should you pull? Okay, when it comes to should you pull, some of the pros are that red is absolutely bonkers good. No matter what unit you pull in red, you're going to be very happy, right? You're either getting insanely good fodder, or you're getting two legendaries who are some of the more powerful nukes in the meta, right? That's going to be great. You're going to love that. Also, blue is pretty decent as well. It's not like the biggest hit. Is that really... It really depends on what you need for your account, right? If you're looking for those legendary merges, then this might be a great place for it. Or if you really want that arcane lance, then that's a good place as well. But then after that, it's a bit of a more of a miss, right? When it goes to the cons of should you pull, green is like hit or miss in my opinion. You could definitely mess up there and same with colorless. So it's kind of like, you really want to just snipe red in my opinion, if you're going to be pulling on this banner, but maybe those other units are your favorite. So maybe you'll pull there as well. And then some other cons, of course, the things you need to think about are the banners coming up. Now, of course, we are about to hit summer, and summer is the biggest season for Fire Emblem Heroes, right? We get an insane amount of alts, and typically, they're pretty powerful. Like, historically, we get a lot of meta units during the summer, so you might want to be saving orbs for those summer banners, because who knows, we might get engaged. That is some copium, but maybe, just maybe, we finally get a new Heroes banner with engage, or maybe we just get, like, a double summer banner with engage. I don't know, but we can all smoke some copium and just hope that we get engaged. So that's some reasons not to pull possibly. Personally, I will be pulling on this banner. I will definitely be going red to try to get at least one Hinoka and then some copies for Nana and Ophelia as well. I might throw an orb at colorless, but I'm probably gonna regret it. But now I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of Legendary Hinoka? Are you as surprised as I was? I was definitely expecting male Legendary Corn and not Hinoka in the slightest. But she honestly does look very good. So I'd love to hear your opinions on her. Do you think she's going to be a powerful nuke? And what do you think of Wings of Mercy 4 and that charge effect? She's going to be offering some insane mobility. As always, I'd like to thank my members for all their constant support. Without it, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. And if you haven't yet, go check out my ranged nuke tier list where I ranked over 211 ranged nukes from triple S down to E. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. This has been Oblivion. I'll catch you all later.